Linen shirts, flannel trousers, tweed caps. Which fabric keeps you warm, which one is durable and which is easy to work with? This all depends on the contained fibers, how they are turned into yarn and how the yarn is made into a cloth. Let me explain. Let's start with the different fibers and limit our view to the most important. Wool, linen, cotton, viscose and polyester. Wool fibers are sheep hairs. Duh! A natural product that can be dyed easily and more or less never loses its color. Wool is durable, so garments made from wool can last over a hundred years like this frock coat. Wool fabric is either woolen or worsted. Woolen means that the raw wool is carded coarsely, so a lot of its fluffiness as well as the irregular structure is preserved. It's softer and thicker. The cool thing about woolen fabrics in terms of sewing is that they almost don't fray because they are felty. This makes working with them more convenient. Pressing is more difficult though. Sometimes top stitching a seam is necessary for a crisp edge, especially with heavy tweed. Worsted wool in turn is combed thoroughly. The result is firmer, thinner and more robust than woolen. The term worsted, by the way, derives from the village of Worsted in Norfolk one of the early centers of worsted wool. It is the correct choice for finer suits, especially evening wear, because results are more sleek and smooth. Now, linen consists of flax. Flax fibers are firm, easily absorb and give off moisture, but flax fibers can break and also need more effort to be dyed, and their color tends to fade a lot easier than dyed wool. Thus, linen in white or other bright colors is the natural choice for bed linens and historical underwear. Linen shirts are my personal favorite, even in winter. Cotton is another plant fiber that might now be the world's most used. I personally consider cotton to be the lower version of linen because it's less comfortable and breezy. The water consumption to produce cotton is very high and dyed cotton fades just as easy as linen. However, it's cheaper and less wrinkly, making it as popular as it is. I use undyed cotton for my mock-ups. Viscose or rayon is considered regenerated cellulose fiber. The thing is, cotton is basically pure cellulose too. So what's the difference? Well, viscose is not grown, but made with recycled cellulose fibers dissolved in chemicals. This results in a liquid of a viscose consistency, hence the name viscose. This liquid is pressed through nozzles and then solidifies. Depending on the nozzle, you can produce threads of varying thicknesses. Traditional methods include a lot of toxic chemicals, but modern methods for producing viscose are a lot more eco-friendly. Thin and smooth viscose can be produced cheaply, making it my first choice as a lining fabric. Polyester is made similarly, but instead of using cellulose fibers in a chemical bath, polyester is made from melted plastic, so basically mineral oil. Again, depending on the nozzle that is used to press the plastic soup into a thread, you can imitate basically every other fabric. Polyester is cheap, durable and shapeable. I try to avoid polyester though. There are legitimate use cases for polyester in sportswear, but I don't do sportswear. Up to 30% of polyester in a wool blend can be reasonable in terms of durability and price, but my inner traditionalist just doesn't like it. Now we have the fibers. Some are short like wool and some can have an almost infinite length like polyester, so-called filament yarn. But how do we turn those into usable thread? Well, filament yarn can be used right away, but wool, flax or cotton need to be spun. Spinning means twisting a bunch of fibers into a single thread. This can be done with a spindle, a spinning wheel or spinning machinery. The fineness of a thread, especially wool thread, is measured with the super numbers. You measure how many meters of a thread weigh one gram. So S120 means that 120 meters of the thread weigh one gram. The higher the number, the finer the thread. Although fineness is not the same as quality and finer threads are even less durable. Multiple threads can even be combined into a single thicker thread by twisting them like a rope. The more threads and the higher the twist, the higher the thread stability, making high twist garments more resistant to wrinkles and creases. High twist cotton, in other words two ply, used in classic menswear results in iron free or at least easy iron shirts. 
High twist wools like fresco are used in so called traveler suits that don't wrinkle so easily. The yarn can then be turned into a cloth by either knitting or weaving it. The most popular knitted fabric might be jersey, which is used for underwear, t shirts, sweatshirts, and sportswear. Knitted fabrics are very elastic without the need to add elastic synthetic fibers. I personally hate working with knitted fabrics because they deform so easily and you need an overlock sewing machine, which I don't have, to properly sew them and finish the edges. If you use a regular sewing machine, make sure to use jersey needles and a zigzag stitch. This is because jersey needles have a rounder tip so they don't poke through the threads of the fabric, but in between the threads and the zigzag stitch preserves the elasticity of the fabric which a straight stitch would not. My preferred type of cloth is woven. Weaving fabrics means that you have the warp, which are threads arranged vertically from the perspective of the weaver, and then you have the weft, which is a thread that is drawn or shot over and under the warp threads. During the process, the warp threads need to be held under high tension, while the weft thread is not. The weft can also be made from a completely different material. Thus, fabrics can behave very differently depending on the direction they are used when sewing. For example, they might be firmer horizontally than vertically. And then we have the bias, which is super important. Unless you use synthetic elastic fibers, woven fabrics are not per se stretchy. However, woven fabrics are stretchy when used on the bias, meaning a 45 degree angle. This is, by the way, how you make a medieval split hose that looks like modern tights. We're men. We're men in tights. Uh, yeah, and without the use of synthetic fibers. Finally, you can vary the weaving process to make pattern fabrics like stripes, herringbone, houndstooth or checks. Obviously, patterns woven into the fabric are a lot more durable than printed patterns. Now let's talk about some specific examples of fabric. First of all, my personal favorite, tweed. By definition, tweed is a woolen fabric, and that's pretty much it. The things we associate with tweed, the colors, the patterns, the quality, these are not necessarily what you get when you buy tweed or tweed garments, because the term tweed is not regulated or protected. Only Harris tweed is. My tip, if you want to buy quality tweed, resort to the established mills and brands like Harris tweed, Moon or Love It. Then we have flannel. A fabric that can either be woolen or, more often, a worsted wool that is milled after weaving, which basically means treating it with sandpaper so you get the fluffy finish. Thus, flannel is not necessarily very warm. Bright and thin flannels are an excellent choice for garments you can wear in spring. Denim might be one of the most popular types of fabric on this planet, thanks to a Jewish-German immigrant called Levi Strauss in the USA. It is the fabric for durable workwear. The culture that developed around denim even turned the fact that dyed cotton fades so easily into a feature. Fading denim is cherished, and the term denim, by the way, derives from its origin. Le Serge de Nîmes, a twill fabric from the French town of Nîmes. Two final questions. First, what makes a fabric good for winter? Well, that's easy now. Something made from thick, fluffy, woolen yarns is best, because the enclosed air isolates. But second, what makes a fabric good for summer? That's a bit more complex. First, it depends on how well the fibers transport moisture. Another important and often neglected factor is its air permeability, meaning how easily air can pass through the fabric. And this is not necessarily dictated by the thickness of the fabric. Thin but tightly woven fabrics are not very breezy. Fabrics made with high twist yarns are thicker but can be coarsely woven, and this leaves room in between the threads, which makes them very breezy. This is why fresco is so great for summer, even though using wool might seem counterintuitive for beginners. Thank you for watching my quick excursion into the realm of fabrics. If you want to know where to buy fabrics at reasonable prices, have a look at this video. If you want to learn more about sewing and tailoring, check this playlist. In any case, please subscribe to my channel since it's a big help for me and it's free. Awesome, see you next time, bye.